What's up, everyone? It's Scotty with MoneyVest, and uh, I have no idea where to begin. Um, so a lot of you know that I'm traveling right now, so I am in London now. So I sent out an update in our Discord because this has been one of the most eventful trips of my life. I will probably remember this trip uh, for a very, 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 very long time because of the sequence of events that have happened um, in the last three to four days. Um, and really what happened was because, uh, you know, a couple, a couple of my friends, we decided to go to London, go to Manchester to watch a few games, uh, football games. And uh, there's just so much that's happened uh, from just, uh, you know, missed flights uh, to, you know, luggage being left behind to canceled and delayed trains to Airbnbs being rebooked, hotels being rebooked, getting scammed all the tickets. Uh, there's been so much that has happened in the last three to four days that we've just been running around and it's it's been crazy it's been a nightmare um so you know i really really hope that nobody as there ever has to go through this process because it's really really stressful and uh but anyway so we're gonna move over to the market updates uh of course the market was a selling off here on the day so selling off quite aggressively in fact the SP was down over 72 basis points and Nasdaq here also down a little bit over 1%, uh, close to 1% on the day. So as always, if you enjoy this video and find it helpful, all I'm asking in return is that you drop a like and of course subscribe to the channel. Links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining us. Uh, the first week of the month is the best time to join. So again, link is going to be down below. We'd love to have you on board. Uh, and again, let's just get, get started here. So we did have, again, broad-based sell-off Tesla after reporting some very horrible delivery numbers, I've got a video coming out for Tesla later today, so that will be released. And of course, we got AMD, Microsoft, NVIDIA, uh, Amazon, Apple, Google, most tech stocks, most big tech stocks, and Magnificent 7, including financials and you know auto manufacturers, industrials, utilities, materials, um, consumer defenses. Everything was selling off with energy, the only sector, one of the sectors that was pushing higher quite aggressively on the back of crude oil prices that continue to push higher. Now, this is what I've mentioned before, and this is what you know a lot of people tend to disagree with, and that is to say that the trouble trifecta, the three things that make a significant impact on the overall market are crude oil prices, the 10-year treasury yield, and the dollar index. And all three of them are pushing higher. So we just witnessed the, um, the crude oil prices. They're now well over... 81 85 dollars a barrel so just been pushing higher year to date crude oil prices are up so they're up a little bit over 20 25 percent on a year to date basis and that is most certainly going to impact gas prices and of course eventually inflation as well not to mention the 10-year treasury yield so that has also been pushing higher more recently i did a video on this a couple days ago this right here is where we are almost at 4.4 percent once again and this has just been a phenomenal run up for the 10 year treasuries once again we're hitting our highest level since december of 2023 and if the yields keep pushing higher well obviously that's going to be a much bigger impact on the overall market and on equities um as well and then finally if you come over to the dollar index we are again pushing up since march since the beginning of this month it's pushed up over 2.4 2.5 percent so all these three forces are creating an environment for equities uh, for creating an environment and making it more difficult for equities to keep pushing higher hence the result of the nasdaq selling off even though getting bought up here still obviously down about almost one percent on the day and of course s p 500 also down a little bit over 0.72 percent 72 basis points uh as well so again we're down a little bit over one percent from our all-time highs which is again practically nothing but at the same time it is not so much the magnitude of the sell-off but really the price action that's taking place on the back of the trouble trifecta uh, and again not to mention the fomc meeting the interest rate jerome powell is going to be talking tomorrow and we did also have get the get the joel's numbers job opening numbers which i will be doing a more separate more dedicated video on that as well so again this right here is the entire market most sectors are selling off energy doing really well on the back of higher crude oil prices so all sectors down except for energy leading the way up about one and a half percent in the last one week it's been a little bit more split energy still doing well materials utilities all pushing higher with real estate healthcare consumer cyclicals technology pulling back and in the last one month again 
we do have most sectors pushing higher with healthcare, consumer cyclical and real estate selling off. Now, I've got a very simple message and something that I need to address for all the new investors, for all the beginner investors, because I do see a lot of comments, a lot of times, you know, people comment on the channel talking about, you know, why caddy are you so negative? Why are you so bearish? Why are you always expecting for a pullback or, you know, a drawdown? Like, why can't you just expect for a bull market to continue? And that is because I know what's going to happen, right? I, I, I understand how market cycles work. And I think most experienced investors and traders and even people in our community that are experienced that have tens and 20 years worth of experience understand and know and will tell you the same, that it isn't about, you know, where the markets are going to go. Like, that's not why we are here. That's not what we're here to predict. We're only here to assess whether the current risk reward ratio whether the current market positioning, the market valuation makes sense or not. That's it, right? And markets always work in cycles. So just because the markets have pushed higher does not mean that we're going to see a pullback. But it also doesn't mean that they're going to keep going higher, right? So the bottom line is that we have to understand that what goes up comes down eventually. There is going to be a correction, may not be at the same magnitude. Markets ripped 20% not expecting for the markets to drop 20%, okay? That's not what I'm saying by any means. All I'm saying is once we get overbought, once we get overextended on the technicals, once the valuations become a little bit more ex expensive, then the upside potential relative to the downside risk is very, very unfavorable, right? So you investing an additional dollar, for every additional dollar that you put into the market at an overbought expensive level, the ROI on that invested additional invested dollar is significantly less than had you invested, let's say a week ago or a month ago, and the market just keep going higher. So your dollars are getting more and more unfavorable risk reward ratios as you keep investing at higher and higher levels. The most money is made, right? When you, in, when you obviously buy low and sell high and buy low, that price is what really determines your future returns. So if you're always, and really that's kind of interesting because to me, I always thought that a much better and bigger flex and from our community and from people would always be that I bought cheap, right? I bought cheap. I bought for a lower price. I got in early, right? And it's kind of the opposite because the momentum and the momentum gets so strong when the greed gets so strong, people boast about buying at higher prices. If you really think about it at the psychology of it, when people say, oh, markets are going to keep going higher. I I'm glad I bought like they're going to keep pushing up. At the end of the day, like at the core of it, it's really just boosting and flexing at buying prices, at high, buying higher prices. But the real, in my opinion, the real money is made when you buy low, sell high, obviously, and then you know your your price is what determines your future returns. So you should always be aiming. You should always be looking for deals. It's it's kind of you know pretty obvious. Like that's true for anything that you buy in life, whether it's a car, whether it's a house, whether it's you know something as simple as a T-shirt. Like you are buying for value you're good you're, you're hoping to get good deals so that you can actually uh, make sure that you make money on that investment right you're able to generate a return and the only way you can do that is by buying low by actually buying for a lower price by buying it for undervalued level and at a discount as well and that's exactly why you know the saying goes that when there's a discount at a retail store uh, there's a huge line, right? People queue up to buy shoes and t-shirts and whatever. But when there's a discount in the stock market, people run because our psychology completely correlated with the momentum of the market. And just because the markets are going higher, that attracts a lot of buyers. When the markets are selling off, that attracts a lot of sellers. But in fact, it should quite be the opposite. When the markets keep pushing higher, uh, we should be more and more cautious. And when the markets are selling off, we should be more and more aggressive. And that's exactly why insiders also have now ramped up on their net selling activity. I talked about this in one of my previous videos when I talked about how this is a mind blowing statistic where even you know insiders on a net net basis are selling uh, a lot of their stock because they do understand that markets are very hot right now. We're, we're at an all time high pretty much. Um, and this is just not going to last forever. So pull pullback or a correction could be on the horizon uh, very soon. So coffee prices, silo prices, volatility also did push higher. Lumber, sugar, and cocoa, as well as orange juice, pulling back. Bitcoin just a little bit over 66,000. Ether just over 3,300. So again, Dow tumbles nearly 400 points, falling for a second day in a rough start to a new quarter. So this right here from Greg Basuk, CEO AXS Investments. What we're seeing is a one-two punch. Um, 
and uh, punch with a combination of continued hot inflation data with profit taking um, and with very significant Q1 market gains, we're due for a little correction. But we think that the investor narrative also continues to be higher for longer with respect to interest rates as well. This right here is the economic calendar. So we did have the JOLS numbers come out today. Uh, and then, of course, we have tomorrow Jerome Powell talking at 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'll try to be live, but no promises there because of everything that's happened here in the UK. But uh, Jerome Powell, yes, is going to be talking at 12.10 p.m. Eastern. And of course, the more important employment situation report comes out on the first Friday of this month, which is going to be for the previous month of March. Now, moving over to the market. So this right here is going to be the S&P 500. Once again, getting bought up here perfectly at the 21 exponential moving average. So that's, I believe, the 21 EMA. Uh, and every time we have, you know, come down to that level, we have been bought up. And this has just been a phenomenal uh, you know, buy the dip opportunity. And right now we're just sitting above that 50, uh, the 21 EMA at 5176. So if, if, and when we actually break down below this level, so by all means, the S and P needs to hold that level. Uh, if you break down, then, then yes, in my opinion, there could be more potential downside considering, um, that that would be a big breakdown below that support that we have validated since uh, November of last year. That's really what's um, you know, installed this very nice uptrend and this bull market for the S&P 500 since the beginning of this year. Uh, and that's exactly why also we haven't really seen a much bigger pullback. It's only been 1.7% at the max in terms of a drawdown. So that is going to be that support of that 21 EMA at 51.75 for S&P 500. Talking about the NASDAQ and NASDAQ here, you know, also coming down to uh, potential support, we are still kind of trading back and forth at that 21 EMA. And I would say that this right here is a much stronger area of support that the NASDAQ needs to hold because if it does break down, then unfortunately there's more potential downside for NASDAQ's 15,900 is going to be that level to watch. If you do end up, let's say, breaking down below this next support and that range is going to be 15,150 to 15,400 for the NASDAQ moving forward. Talking about Apple and Apple here continues to sell off down about 0.7% and it's now starting to break down from its first tier support. And that next level is going to be that second area of demand sitting in the 150s that would by far, in my opinion, be the most favorable, some of the best risk reward opportunity on Apple at those prices. And of course, that target and resistance is going to stay put all the way up to 196, 197 for Apple moving forward. Talking about Amazon. And Amazon here just consolidating sideways. So lots of uh, momentum, you know, the sideways here support level is going to stay but roughly at 178. That's exactly what we have been talking about for Amazon resistance and targets going to be all the way up to 188 for Amazon with the support level in line with that confluence and in that inside that green circle uh, aligned with this higher low. So this right here, very, very important higher low as well as this support over here for Amazon as well. So lots of consolidation sideways resistance all the way up to as much as 178 for Amazon moving forward. Uh, talking a little bit about Tesla and Tesla, I've got a video coming out later today. So again, a very, very, you know, not, not so great uh, delivery numbers. There's literally no sugar coating it. Uh, down to almost 5%, 166. Resistance is gonna stay put all the way up to 177 for uh, for Tesla. So that right there is gonna be that level. to so keep in mind, uh, again, trading below all of its moving averages, huge area of supply in the 200s to as much as 240s for Tesla at the moment. Talking a little bit about PayPal and PayPal here uh, getting bought up, but it was not able to hold above that resistance of $68. I mean, this is a level that we talked about, right, in our previous videos, and it was really coming down to whether we're going to see a breakout or a, uh, a breakdown from that level. And unfortunately, we got rejected at that resistance for PayPal at $68, $69, kind of aligned with that previous resistance. Uh, and of course, sold right back down with the RSI MACD also not looking super great considering that we were overbought, overextended with the RSI coming down. MACD also showing signs of a potential bearish reversal and some institutional involvement also trying to fade uh, at these prices. So even though we did get bought up here intraday, which is a good thing, we'll continue to monitor where the 50 EMA trades relative to the 200 SMA. And again, the resistance all the way up to $68 for PayPal. Uh, Visa, on the other hand, consolidating sideways at the moment. So support level is going to stay at a 273 for Visa all the way down to as low as 252 to 249. M more important, like probably the strongest support level uh, over here inside this green rectangle, um, sitting roughly at 249, 250s 
for Visa. So those right there are going to be some levels to watch for the company. Talking about NVIDIA and NVIDIA here also starting to slightly go down about 1%. So 894 support level is going to stay put at 844. So this right here, very, very important level of support to watch for NVIDIA all the way down to that 50 simple moving average and roughly at 781, 782 for NVIDIA with a resistance and a target all the way up to 969, 970 for the company. And again, uh, much stronger levels that we've talked about in the 500s, 400s with my fair value also sitting somewhere around those levels for NVIDIA. Talking about advanced micro devices and AMD here, consolidating sideways for the most part, but down a little bit over two and a half percent. Support level, much stronger support is gonna stay put at 164, 165 for AMD, all the way down to as low as 152 for advanced micro devices. So lots of consolidation, seeing a little bit of a pullback, which is normal considering how overextended, overbought the stock was. So RSI, MACD, including the institutional L3 banker, oscillator also coming down for AMD as well. Talking about Meta platforms and Meta here pushing higher, surprisingly up over 1.2%, validating that support here along with that 50 simple moving average. And that's gonna stay put roughly at 475 to down to 454 for Meta. And resistance is going to be pretty much at that all time high roughly at $518 for Meta. Uh, again, valuations, I would argue, is somewhat reasonably priced, relatively speaking, compared to some of the other big tech Magnificent 7 stocks. Uh, but again, by no means it is cheap or undervalued at this prices. Uh, for Netflix, resistance is going to stay put at 624 and support level is going to be at around 535, 540. Uh, and this right here is a huge gap that Netflix may need to fill all the way down to that 200 simple moving average down to $472 for Netflix as well. Google, on the other hand, uh, continues to move higher. 155 is where it's at. Very, very strong recovery. We did have a trade idea on this. So again, if you want to get access to all the alerts and ideas and options, link is going to be down below. We'd love to have you on board. RSI, MACD, everything pushing higher very, very nicely. This is a very nice reversal trade on Google, which performed incredibly good, up over 16% in a very short period of time. Microsoft, on the other hand, consolidating sideways and support level is going to stay put right at that confluence inside this green circle. It's going to be staying put at 395, close to $400 per share for Microsoft. And of course, if we do get a breakdown below this, then the next level is going to be down to 360s and that aligned with that 200 simple moving average, which is where I would be a lot more interested in, uh, in of course, Microsoft. Or, or yeah, Microsoft's here. Uh, and phase on the other hand, down about 4%. So selling off once again. So support level is going to stay put down to $108. Lots of consolidations getting rejected at the 200 SMA. Got a double top resistance, very similar to PayPal at around $138. We're not able to successfully break out above that level. So support level is going to stay put about $108 per share for end phase. Uh, and finally, we got Costco and Costco here you know, starting to really roll over and sell off down about 1.3%, breaking down below its 50 day simple moving average and also a huge support down below $700. And uh, next level is going to be 678 down to as well as 644 for Costco. It was an overbought stock. It was a stock that was trading at a very expensive and a premium valuation. So that all makes sense why as to why it is pulling back here on the day. So hope you all enjoyed this video and uh, found it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. And again, I would really appreciate that. Check out the links down below if you want to join our MoneyVest community and of course get access to all the members only private videos, including all the trade alerts and trade ideas, all the options alerts, and we'll love to have you on board. And uh, again, don't forget Jerome Powell speaking tomorrow. Employ employment numbers coming out later this week and I will be doing a video on Tesla deliveries as well. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.